guys, it's tempting. It's tempting to go like the blue route. Dang girl, you look floorless. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back. Today we are playing with an eyeshadow palette. I know we have not done an eyeshadow palette on my channel in a long time. I'm really, really excited about this one. So this is the Rose Quartz Crystal Gemstone Palette from Aether Beauty. They were kind enough to send this along to me. I see their products around on like Sephora and stuff and I just love them. They're so aesthetically pleasing. Also, the packaging is very unique in a lot of ways. We're going to get into all of that. I'm gonna zoom you guys in. We're going to do some swatches. God help me, you guys. I Just bear with me. I'm not good at swatching but we're going to do an eye look. I have all of my makeup on right now, except for eyes. And if you are new here and you like a long-winded queen talking about clean beauty, then maybe consider subscribing while you're here. If you are not new here and you miss the vlogs, <laughs> you've been watching my channel for a while and you're like, Khaki, where are the vlogs? I made a second channel. Figure I should just throw that in here because I have yet to mention it in like the beginning of a video. That is linked on my front page. It's called More Khaki for those of you who want more khaki in your life. But anyway, that's there in case any of you guys didn't already know that. And let's go ahead, zoom in, and start putting some of this beautiful eyeshadow on my face. So as usual, my swatches are a disaster. There are so many shades in this palette. You don't realize it because of the way that they're set up. Everything is just kind of, you know, geometric, but you do, you get 12 shades in here. And I just really didn't like economize the space on my arm all that well when I was putting it on there. And then I remembered I got blood drawn today and I just like did not want to put eyeshadow on top of this weird gross <laughs> so much on my arm um uh, oh i suck wow from here to here we have my disgusting wound sorry about that this is crystalline scorpio aura astarte which is interesting in the pan it looks gray but it's actually like a taupey purple that shifts blue divine then we have this coppery, really, really beautiful orangey shade, and that is called Reawakening. This is probably the rock star of the palette. This is called Rose Quartz. Heartstone, which is kind of a hot pink-ish, you know, comparatively. Stardust, and it is probably like the coolest, brightest shade in the palette. Sandstone, which is a lot darker than it looks in the pan. It makes a fantastic transition shade. And then these two are from actually the far right of the palette. I just stopped short of this nonsense. So this is called Aphrodite and this is grounding. Wow. So now that you know the shades that are in the palette, we are going to do exactly what I just said and use this one, which is called sandstone, as a transition shade. I'm going to put it on this big fluffy brush from Thrive. I have gotten back into less precise eye looks. Is that weird? I mean, is that like a weird thing to say? Like, oh, I like sloppier makeup. I just want everything to look a little easier than it used to. And I find that when I start with a bigger brush, I tend to put a little more product down than I really mean to. And then I kind of have to work my way out of it. <laughs> and that's fine. Like it's kind of a fun game. Because I find that when I do things kind of too precisely, my eyes just end up looking too small. <laughs> I'd rather just go big, pretend that I have a lot of eyelid real estate when really I just have a lot of empty space above my eye. But look at that color in the pan. It's almost a khaki color. And then when you put it on it, I mean, everything turns pink on me, everything, because I have such yellow undertones, but it's just such a beautiful kind of almost rosy tan color. Isn't that like the perfect transition shade? I mean, you could just leave that. <laughs> Because these actually, I'm spoiling the ingredients section of this video, but this is infused with shea butter and coconut oil. And so it's super creamy. It's hard to compare it to anything because there's nothing dusty about these. It's not like a Detasha Denona, like one end of the spectrum that I always talk about where it's so creamy, but it's like, wow, once it's stuck down, it's stuck down, like good luck blending it. Although I've heard that the Biba palette is a little bit better. The other side of that spectrum is, you know, your Anastasia Beverly Hills, which is like so dusty, but it just blends for days. This is neither of those. It's, it's somewhere in the middle. It's different from the Lawless The One palette as well. I would say it just goes on really creamy and you can go in with a really relatively large brush and not do too much damage just because it, it does a lot of the blending for you. Another big perk of this palette is that all of this stuff is recyclable and completely waste neutral, I think is what I, I'll read it on the website, but 
All the pans pop out. This is elastic instead of the magnet. There's no mirror. This is just paper. Cosmetics by Caroline did a whole interview with her. I think she must like know her personally or something, which is really cool. But uh, but yeah, if you like want to actually like meet the creator or whatever, she did an interview on her channel a little while ago. I'll link to. I mean, you know, guys, it's tempting. It's tempting to go like the blue route. I think I'm gonna stay where a lot of you guys would probably go with this palette. The reason that you are buying a palette called the rose quartz palette is because you want the rose quartz colors in it so we're going to go with the rose quartz colors in it so I'm actually going to start with the shade rose quartz as kind of our local color sort of all over the lid thing I'm gonna do it with my my finger here I can't even tell you guys though like how easy this is to apply and it doesn't have a lot of fallout because of I feel like all kind of the emollient ingredients that are in it and it has a ton of really beautiful kind of foily payoff without, I don't know, without looking cheesy. Sometimes when things are a little bit too duochrome, they can make you look like you're trying to be a little too young, even if you're 16. This doesn't do that. I'm, I'm proud to say that, you know, this is still, it's a fun palette with a bunch of shades that I don't have anywhere else, but it's not too young. It's not too like, I don't know trendy color pop kind of thing. But you will see kind of as I'm putting this on, it's a cooler tone palette. And a lot of people have been really asking for that in the space. I see it a lot in kind of the beauty community where people are like, why are all of the palettes warm? I don't know, it works for me because I have such warm undertones, but you'll see I stayed away from the Kosa's Papaya 1972 today because it's so orange. So warm tones make things look like they're coming forward and cool tones tend to make things look like they are receding. So for me, I just kind of wanted to strategize around that, use a little bit of a cooler tone blush, a little bit cooler tone bronzer on my face, just so that it wasn't just this really stark, obvious contrast because it will make my eyes look smaller. It's kind of a personal problem, but just keep that in mind. This is a very cool tone palette. Okay, I'm gonna go into my crease with this, I mean, just perfect shade. Honestly, this is called Scorpio and it is just one of the most perfect crease shades I've ever seen. And I'm using this little Sigma brush, just kind of whatever's handy. I do think that, like I said, this palette does you a lot of favors. Like it does a lot of the work for you. And I do love that there's a combination of matte shades and shimmery shades. So you can control how much shimmer you're using. There's something really beautiful about using a shimmery shade to, you know, help you blend and things, but you want to be able to back off of it sometimes too. Okay, going in with Heartstone, the kind of hotter pink shade here right above. And it's so pigmented and they blend so beautifully. I love that. A little out of practice. I'm gonna go back in with that transition shade and just sort of blend all of that together. I'll clean up around my eyes as well here in a minute, but not too concerned. I'm gonna take this shade right here, this kind of golden shade, what's it called again? Divine. And I'm gonna put that in my inner corner and sort of blend it into the sparkly rose gold pink, the rose quartz color that I have on my lid. And you can see even that like super sparkly shade, it's not blinding. I do feel like this was still done in good taste. It's one of those crystals inspired, it falls into the whole like Zodiac category, I feel like where we're kind of hinging on a lot of those vibes, but it's not like, oh, you're a water sign. Let's make everything blue. You know, it's, it's still done in a really, really thoughtful way that's wearable every day. So I'm gonna go into this shade Stardust and I'm going to just highlight my brow bone with that. Brow bone highlight has become a big part of my look and my life lately. I've always enjoyed it, but like I find myself putting three different shades on my brow bone lately, just having fun. So yeah, you get one, two, three, four really great mattes in this palette. Two of them, these two right here, I feel like any look hinges on those. Like you'll probably pan those the fastest. And then you have, you know, one, two, three shimmer shimmers, no, four shimmers, I would say like those. And then these all in the middle are like duochromes. Look at that brightening on the inside of my eye though, right there. Ooh, I love that. Okay, let's take a smaller brush here. And what do I wanna do? I'm gonna go in with Rose Quartz, the 
the title track, if you will, underneath here. I don't care what anybody says. That makes my eyes look bigger. It's been so long since I played with an eyeshadow palette. I honestly feel really weird right now. <laughs> this is like painting color on my face. It's just not something I've done in a while. And I'm gonna go in with that really ethereal, like light white color. Did I wanna do that? Did I mean to do that? I don't know. We're just having fun. Pick up a little more rose quartz and do a little bit of that. Do I wanna do that? Is that, is that what I wanna do? Maybe a little bit of the transition shade, that sandstone shade. Yeah, I like that. How do I look? Crazy? Is that what I was going for? No, eyeshadow always looks weird until you get mascara on. I love the saturation value on these. I love how easy they are to work with. Like I can joke around while I'm putting them on and nothing terrible happens. If this were a Natasha Denona palette, I would have had to start over. You know, the stakes are just really, really high on a palette like that. They take absolute concentration. And this was just one of those like fun, you could do this happily in the morning because it's one of those palettes where the formula just works with you. It actually reminds me a lot of Urban Decay. That's why I like it so much. And honestly, that is really high praise coming from me because you guys know the Born to Run palette was my like palette of the year from a shade range standpoint, but also from a formula standpoint. I just think that their formula is so easy to work with. It's like the perfect meeting place of saturation and blendability and this hits the marks too. And so, I mean, I could go more exaggerated here. I could build my crease up some more with like some of the cooler tones in here if I wanted to go nuts. This gray tone right here, I wanna paint my walls this color. It's so pretty. I don't know, we could just, just barely darken the crease with that, what do y'all say? Ooh, huh, that's really pretty. I have to be careful because my eyes are already so deep set that like, Things can get exaggerated in a hurry, but that's so pretty. And I like it because it's matte. It tones down a little bit of that shimmer. You guys know I'm not a professional makeup artist. There is not a lot of uh, shame in my game. If I mess it up, I mess it up, but that was pretty easy. You know, that was pretty easy. So I will now, for my next trick, go off camera throw a little eyeliner on and some mascara and we will talk claims and my final thoughts on this, this little palette here. Okay, so we've got mascara, we've got some eyeliner. The mascara that I use is the same mascara I always use is the Thrive and then I also used this as my eyeliner. This is this Steel by Antonym eyeliner pencil and whoops, that's the wrong end. It comes with a sharpener on one end and uh, it's gray. <laughs> and so it actually looks really fantastic with this palette because it's cool toned and I think it just really sets it off. Super easy to apply, big fan of this. It came in my Petivore box, but I am loving this look on my eyes. It is, like I said, kind of a change of pace for me because it is a cool toned palette. And so it's just kind of fun to create around that, knowing that that's the look that I was going for. And so I just think, that is so freaking pretty. I have definitely worked a lot harder and gotten less flattering eye looks in the past with other palettes. It was one of the most unfrustrating palettes I've ever worked with. This palette is $58, which, you know, that's not an inexpensive eyeshadow palette, but I do think that the quality is there. It says the perfect day to night romantic 12 shade palette formulated with organic coconut oil and organic shea butter to create an uber smooth buttery texture for one, one swipe application and I totally agree. It's beautiful and it is so easy to put on. Infused with organic rose hip oil, we do love rose on my channel, which provides radiant looking glowing skin. Rose quartz powder, it actually has rose quartz in the rose quartz eyeshadow palette. Helps to reduce the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles and redness while illuminating the skin with its light reflective crystals, I would say yeah, it does that. This palette is sustainably packaged. With removal of eyeshadow pans and elastic, this paper palette is fully recyclable and zero waste the first in the industry. That was what I was trying to articulate earlier and doing a very poor job of. 10% of proceeds go to The Water Project, which provides clean, safe, and reliable water and sanitation solutions across Sub-Saharan Africa, one village at a time. That is bomb, 
That is bomb. 100% sustainably designed in California, 70% naturally derived ingredients formulated with expertise. So Sephora carries all of their palettes, uh, not just the most recent one. They're all, you know, clean at Sephora seal. And so there's the Rose Quartz Crystal Gemstone Palette, the Grid, okay, one more time, Khaki, Crystal Grid Gemstone Palette, and the Summer Solstice Eyeshadow Palette. They all have different concepts. The Crystal Grid is definitely like much deeper tones and uh, all shimmers. The Summer Solstice is much warmer, and then this Rose Quartz is really nice and cool. So inside right here, it also gives an explanation in case you didn't go online. It says, hello, beautiful. We have removed the mirror and magnets inside to be more sustainable. We strive to make the best sustainable choices in all of our products. Let's be real. You'll probably be using this palette in front of a mirror anyway. By removing the mirror and magnets, it becomes fully recyclable, and we are saving this palette from going directly to the landfill. It's a win-win for both you and our Mother Earth. Thanks for your love and understanding. Hashtag good vibes beauty. Also, if you're curious how I cleaned up around my eyes, I'm just gonna tell you what I have on my face right now. I am wearing the Drunk Elephant. I have pushed everything away. I'm wearing the Drunk Elephant Umbra Tint as kind of my base. I then put the Westman Atelier Foundation, which I have grown to really, 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 really love. Honestly, it is just so good. And I love the shade match too. I use Atelier Zero. And that is just everywhere that I needed a little bit of coverage. I just dibbity dab, tippity tap that on. And that's what I cleaned up under my eyes with as well. And then you guys, I'm spoiling everything here, but wow. <laughs> Wow, is this beautiful. This is the Ilia powder. This is the Fade Into You Soft Focus Finishing Powder. I hauled this in my Sephora VIB haul and I was afraid. I was honestly afraid of this because it has cornstarch as the first ingredient and you know, so does the RMS Unpowder as well as the On Me Powder. Both of those I don't totally love. I think that they granulate and kind of ruin a face of makeup and this, I, <laughs> it doesn't. It's so good. Oh my god. I have worn it now twice, but both times, you guys, like I looked at myself in the mirror, truth in my car, and I was like, dang girl, you look floorless. Like it is super blurring. It's awesome on the pores. It's insanely finely milled. And look at this technology. Okay. I did a terrible job of using the technology. <laughs> The whole point is that it has this little twisty thing like on a salt shaker or something and you can cover the grate so that it doesn't go everywhere. But of course I forgot and was shaking it around talking to you about it and I just shook a bunch of powder out so that's fun. <laughs> but I'm gonna use it so it doesn't matter. I can't tell you though. I can't tell you how little of it you have to put on and how much setting you get out of it. It's so awesome. There's just it's great when you find something that works and I have to put on so much of other powders to get them to actually set my face down and this granted I've only used it just on top of this makeup situation but so far so beautiful I'm really into it so that's kind of uh the front runner right now in terms of my setting powder contest you guys I stink and love this eyeshadow palette I have been using it for some lukes on my Instagram lately and I would honestly want to try their other palettes now that I know because this is one of the best formulas that I've ever interacted with. I don't know, it feels like a really high quality, high end product. When you buy something that is, you know, makeup artist quality, a lot of times you're working with something that's got a little bit more of a learning curve and that's harder. This does not feel like that. This feels like a very high end consumer product, if that makes sense. It is really, really pleasing for people who love makeup, but it's also really, really beginner friendly. Even when I'm like, my muscles aren't hot for eyeshadow, I can just kind of slam a brush in there and rub it around on my eye. And it just kind of looks like I know what I'm doing. And that really says a lot for an eyeshadow palette. So this is, this is really, really awesome. And for those of you out there who love the whole beauty counter concept of the removable mirror and the recyclable packaging, this is going for the same thing. And I think that these powders actually outperform the new powders from Beauty Counter. The Beauty Counter ones are pretty, but this is this is effortless. There's just something to be said for effortless. I'll take effortless any day. So those are my thoughts on the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz Crystal Gemstone Palette. Let me know if you have any additional questions on this. Make sure that everybody gets the information that they need, but I'm really excited to be able to kind of mix it up because we have been doing a lot of foundation wear tests and things like that to just 
get in and have fun with an eyeshadow palette today. So if you enjoyed this, guys, get in the dirt, da, da, da. So if you enjoyed this, guys, and you've been waiting to find out more about this palette and this satisfied all of your curiosity, give this a thumbs up. That's a lot of stakes. Just give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you are new here and you want to keep hanging out with us, go ahead and hit the button down below and subscribe. We would love that. Just speaking on your behalf. If you really like blush, you should probably go ahead and subscribe because we really like blush here. Got merch coming soon, guys. Don't worry. That's, that's really all I have to say about that. Thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.